In this video, I'm going to reveal to you some mistakes I made in a pond project that I did about six, seven years ago. I had this idea of building a bog garden and a pond combination, and I wanted to see if it would really work. I've been trying it for a number of years, it's just not a good idea. So right now I'm in the process of rebuilding the pond. In the first part of the video I'll explain what I tried to do and why it didn't work. I hope that will prevent you from making similar mistakes with your pond and then I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to fix it up. I'd made a number of bog gardens which were quite successful and I thought well I'll make another one here. This whole area here is a bog garden and so the soil stays fairly wet and in the middle of it I wanted to create a couple ponds. So I had planned to have a pond on the left and a pond on the right with this nice bridge running through it. That part of the design I really like. It looks as if water runs from this side to this side under the bridge but in fact there are two separate ponds. So the left side is one liner and the right side is a separate liner and they meet and join underneath the bridge but water doesn't flow from one side to the other. But rather than my traditional pond design I was going to put soil in the bottom of the pond and grow a lot of bog plants here. Things that want to sit in a couple inches of water but also would enjoy all of that soil. I'd never read about building a pond quite like this, but I thought it's a project that was worth a try and see how it works. So the pond on the right here is still in its original form. You can see the bulrushes are growing quite nicely in it. And so the plants are really happy here. The problem is that they're too happy. I get a lot of weeds growing in this area. In fact, the weeds grow so well that I just can't keep up with weeding them. And that's one thing I don't like about this pond. The second problem is that it just loses water too quickly. The pond on my left was always full of weeds and the water seeped out of it all of the time. In fact, if I would fill this within two days, the level of water was down below the mud in the bottom of the pond. So what I did last few days is I started digging out this pond. I took out all of the rocks, started taking out a lot of the soil. I wanted to find the liner and then test the liner to see if it maybe had a leak. Maybe that's why the water was running away. Well, it's been sitting here for several days. The water isn't going anywhere. The liner is quite strong and is holding the water well. So there must be another reason why the water is running away here. What I did when I built this pond was I decided that I'd let the liner be below the soil level. So the liner came up and the soil was a little bit higher than the liner and I thought that a little excess water would just run away into the surrounding gardens. But in fact what's been happening is that the water creeps up the liner. This pond has a lot of soil in the bottom and some of that soil was creeping up the side, touching the liner and touching the soil outside. So it was one like one continuous sheet from in the pond to the soil outside the pond. And what happens when you do that is the water just moves along that sheet. The pond liner, in fact, instead of holding water in, was actually helping the water creep out of the pond. And that's why it wasn't holding water. And that's quite common in ponds. If your liner gets a little too low, it can still be above the water line and you think it's holding water, but in fact the water moves along the liner. You need several inches of bare liner above the water line to keep the water in. If you only have an inch or two, the water just creeps out. And in fact, a lot of people who complain about leaks in their ponds, they don't really have leaks. What they have is they have a liner that's a bit too low around the edges and the water is creeping out along the liner. And if you have a look at this liner, you can see that it's below the level of the soil. And that really was a mistake. The second mistake was putting all this soil inside the pond. That's just a perfect environment for weeds. So what I'm going to do with this pond is I'm going to take all the water out so I can work in it. Then I'll take as much of the soil out as I can and then I'll move the liner back a bit and put some rocks around the outside to hold that liner away from the soil around the outside of the pond. Once I do that, this should return to a natural pond. It will hold water, it'll have less weeds because there's no soil and nutrients in the water all of the time. 
and in fact I have a special plan for this pond which I'll reveal at the end of the video. The water and most of the soil has now been removed from the bottom of the pond. It still looks like there's a lot of mud there but that's just because the pond liner is dirty. In order to make the pond liner taller I pull it away from the back layer of soil and add some extra soil behind it. This does make the pond a little smaller but at least it won't leak. Now most of the rocks are in place and the soil behind the liner has been filled up to a good level but you can see that the liner is still taller than either the rocks or the soil behind it. All of the vertical rocks are now in place. There will be a final row of rocks added to the top and these rocks will be selected so that they're a little larger and they'll rest on the rocks that you see there and cover the pond liner. So when I'm totally finished you won't see any of the pond liner. In the finished pond the water will go up to about halfway up these rocks so that the liner is several inches above the top of the water. This will prevent any water from seeping up along that liner and I'll have a pond that will stay wet all of the time. So what do you do with this new pond? I haven't made a final decision. I may put in some miniature water lilies here. But for this year I have a special project. I've gone out and bought a number of elephant ears. Different type of cultivars and different colors. I decided to take those elephant ears, pot each one up separately, and put them directly in the pond so that the bottom two inches of the pot is sitting in water. Elephant ears like lots of water and I think they'll grow really well here. This is what they look like by middle summer. They're now making very large colorful leaves and it's quite a nice display beside the bridge. I have a second set of each of these elephant ears and I'm planting them in the regular garden and I'm curious to see which ones grow better. In theory at least, since elephant ears like growing in wet boggy areas, the ones in this pond should do better. But I wonder how much better they'll do. And I'll make a separate video to show you how these do compared to the ones in the regular garden. I hope this video will help you prevent making these kind of mistakes yourselves. One final pond. This is my own natural pond that uses a rubber liner but has no pump or filter and I use no chemicals. It has now been in place for about 13 years and I have no algae problems. If you want to know more about building such natural ponds, join our Facebook group called Building Natural Ponds and consider buying my book also called Building Natural Ponds. I wish you luck with your next pond project.